everybody and welcome. Today I'm going to be talking about a very, very, very special category of games. Now this uh, category is special for a couple of different reasons. Uh, first off, it's this is going to be a top 10 list as opposed to the top 5 lists that make up the vast majority of what I've done. And secondly, this is something that I uh, personally have had to deal with a lot relatively recently because nowadays the the majority of the board gaming that I do is actually at my local game store and the problem is I can't get there until like right about two and a half or three hours before the store closes so I'm having to uh, sort of make a choice between two different categories I can either uh, bring and play games that are a little bit more complicated and take longer uh, but I know that everybody I'm going to be playing with knows how to play it or I can bring less complicated easy to learn easy to play games so that we can just sort of pick up and go and maybe get two or three uh, games out in it so uh, for this purpose I'm, I'm gonna be talking about my personal top 10 fast playing games now what I mean by that is games that overall are quick to play. So that means going from uh, learning how and setting up everything to finishing up and cleaning up everything. And uh, I just want to make the distinction that I'm not talking about games that are necessarily like really fast paced. So you've got something like uh, like Galaxy Trucker where you've got just a bunch of parts in the middle of the table and everybody's just snatching and grabbing and you know just looking really quick trying to get the parts that they need. That is fast Haste at certain points, or uh, even something like uh, like Twilight Struggle or Labyrinth, the uh, the war games like that. Those can end up being faster paced uh, once you have two people who are uh, very experienced, know what they're going to do, like planning, doing the whole plan three or four moves ahead of time, all of that kind of stuff. Then you can have turns that go very quick. But that's not the kind of thing I'm I'm talking about. I'm talking more the overall game itself. Uh, tends to take less time compared to other types of games uh, that are similar or dissimilar, whatever it happens to be. But either way, with that little disclaimer out of the way, I'm going to go right on ahead and get started with my number 10. At number 10, I've got a really, really fun game that I only recently bought myself, but have played it several times and had an absolute blast doing it every single time. The game itself is The Resistance. Uh, this is a really, really fun, very fast, like uh, if you're really, really quick with this, you can play it in 15 or 20 minutes at the most very very quick it's a lot of fun the idea is that it's all about deception and table talk trying to figure out uh, who's who and all that kind of stuff if you're familiar with something like uh, shadows over camelot where you have a traitor then the idea is that with this you have x number of good people and y number of the traitors the spies in this case and the idea is that you have teams go out on missions and if there is a spy on that mission they can force the mission to fail or if everybody says they succeed, then the resistance wins. And the idea is whoever gets uh, either three successful missions or three failed missions, uh, the resistance or the spies win respectively. It's a lot of fun, like I said, extremely easy to learn, very, very fast to play. The only issue with this and the reason that it's kind of lower on my list is uh, simply because um, you need at least five people to have a really good game. So it can be very, very tough to find that many people available uh, to do it. But that said, it does play up to 10. So if you've got five, then um, if you've got more than five as well, then you're good to go with the resistance. It's actually a very fun party game, uh, very similar to a werewolf if you've ever played that. But the nice thing is that this doesn't need a moderator which is always very, very nice. So overall, that's why The Resistance is my number 10. At number 
fine. I had a, a little bit of a clash about which uh, game I wanted to put in here. I was debating between two of them. The one that ended up coming out on top was Libertalia. Uh, the other game that I was debating amongst was uh, uh, Citadels, which is another really, really good game. Both of these games are role-picking games uh, that give you some kind of an ability for the round. Uh, the thing is that with Libertalia, you've got a lot more going on compared with Citadels. With Citadels, you've got the roles, and then you're trying to uh, to build up buildings. With Libertalia, you've got just uh, you just have a touch more essentially just stuff going on, a little bit more strategy, more things to keep track of, trying to get treasure, all that kind of stuff. Uh, so in my opinion, just a, a hair better in that sense. Uh, the reason that this is a little bit lower on the list, or near the bottom of the list rather, is uh, simply because it does take a little bit longer. Uh, this, this game is typically up to about an hour, as opposed to most of the games I'm going to be talking about are right about half an hour, depending. Uh, but uh, one thing that's really nice about this is it's got the, uh, the pirate theme, which a lot of people will be very familiar with and able to sort of jump in with and, you know, understand like, oh, I'm the cannoneer or the gunner uh, or the first mate, whatever it happens to be. Um, and people can understand what they mean and it's not some arbitrary alien thing that nobody's ever heard of before. Uh, but overall, a very, very fun game. Uh, it is fairly quick to learn, not ridiculously, but fast enough. And overall, going from a very start to absolute finish, you're probably looking at maybe an hour and 20 minutes, depending on how quickly the people you're playing with can catch on. But overall, very good game. Narrowly edged out, edged out Citadels. Libertalia is my number nine. I've got a game that I have talked about a few times over uh, the course of uh, my videos here, and uh, I've also briefly mentioned some of its companion games as well. The game that I'm uh, talking about for now is Forbidden Island, but you've also got uh, Forbidden Desert is uh, the one that immediately comes to mind. But uh, this is a really, really fun game, very, very basic tile uh, placing game, and the idea is that you're trying to collect all the treasures from the island as it's sort of sinking. Uh, it's very, very fun, very quick to play, and uh, again, very quick to learn as well, which is always nice. One of the issues I have with this game in particular is just that you can only play two to four people, which which isn't necessarily bad. I mean, several of the games I have uh, play two to four people. Uh, but in, in this particular case, like the theme is a little bit odd. Uh, some people would obviously be familiar with something like Indiana Jones or things like that. Uh, but I've got uh, games later on that I feel really exemplify that a little bit better. Uh, but in this case, I mean, it is very simple, really quick to pick up, really quick to play, and it is uh, really nice and compact too, which is always nice to see in a game like this as well. So for all of those reasons, Forbidden Island is my number eight. Seven, I have a really great game that is one of the only ways that you can pretend to shoot your friends directly in the face. This game is Cash and Guns. This is a ridiculously exciting and fun and crazy game. And uh, the second edition actually relatively recently came out. Uh, it was at uh, Gen Con when I was there. Unfortunately, I didn't pick it up because uh, as it is, I don't really get to play this too much. But uh, this is a very, very fun game. Again, just like all of the games I'm talking about today, it's, it's easy to learn, fast to play, and it's just, in this case, just weird and quirky and crazy. And a lot of people are just completely weirded out when you tell them, it's like, oh yeah, we're a bunch of bank robbers and we get to point guns at each other. Wait, what, really? 
and it, it just sort of catches people a little bit off guard, which which just makes it that much more fun. It's a really, really crazy, really fun game. Uh, in my opinion, better with the Yakuza expansion, which I personally don't have, unfortunately. But uh, one of the issues and why it's uh, just a, a touch uh, lower on the list is that you need four people to play it. So it's not really as versatile as some of these other games, but even so, I mean, it's right about a half hour, probably... 45 minutes maybe uh, for you to go from trying to tell everybody how to play to actually finishing uh, your first game. Uh, and that's uh, if you don't use the police officer. If you add the police officer, it'll obviously take you a little bit longer. But overall, really fun, really fast, just plain quirky, crazy, weird, um, off the beaten path type of game. Just overall, tons and tons of fun. Cash and Guns, my number seven. six I've got a game that is in a way things that a lot of nerds and geeks tend to think about uh, and the way that uh, this type of thing would play out the game itself is smash up and for those of you who are uninitiated the idea behind this is that you've got eight factions essentially so you've got pirates robots changelings uh, dinosaurs ninjas and I can't remember the other three but you get the idea oh aliens that's another one zombies Either way, great, now whoever's left is going to be really mad at me. <laughs> Either way, uh, Smash Up is just a really fun, crazy, quirky, wacko game. And again, it's one of the things that this sort of exemplifies a lot of what uh, people tend to think about. Like, who would win if you pit zombies versus aliens? I don't know. You can watch that one movie that's about monsters and aliens, but zombies, I don't know. Who knows? Or uh, what about robots and pirates? But this game does it one better where you take two of the factions and combine them together. So you have your alien pirates, you have your zombie changelings, whatever it happens to be. It just becomes so crazy and ridiculous so quickly. Um, the, the one major issue I have with this game is that it can be a little bit longer to learn how to play and uh, particularly to really get uh, sort of the nuances of strategy because it, it can take a lot of time to figure out really how the different cards, minions, and everything interact with one another and how can how they can uh, sort of support and really um, make, e uh, make each other uh, sort of really stand out and come alive, so to speak. But either way, it is still a lot of fun, great game. Uh, relatively quick to play. This this one is a little bit on the longer side, depending on um, not only how many people you're playing with, but um, how uh, experienced they are. But again, with any game, if people are less experienced, it's going to be a little bit slower. Uh, but in this particular case, you can play two to four uh, players, which is right at a, a very good number, especially when you're trying to talk about a game that's really quick and uh, you know can move very uh, very fast. But um, in this case, uh, Smash Up, overall, very good game, and my number six. I've got another game that I have talked about at fair length throughout my uh, my videos here and uh, it's a really really fun game that has a ton of expansions. The game itself is Race for the Galaxy. This is a, a really fun game that's similar to, uh, I talked about Citadels uh, briefly and this is somewhat similar to Citadels where um, the idea is that you pick a role which is essentially a phase that's going to occur and then you and the rest of the players utilize it however you wish, etc, etc. I mean, it's, this is one of those games that is a little bit tougher to, to learn, but the really nice thing about this is the way that the, um, 
uh, what do you call them? Uh, the way that the symbols are set up and everything, it makes it so much easier. Uh, once you figure out what those symbols mean, then you don't even need to ask when you get new cards what what it is that you're looking at because you you know what each individual symbol indicates uh, like if it's a type of planet a type of resource uh, like X number of victory points whatever it happens to be and then you've got just plain old regular text that you can just read and say oh okay well that makes sense very very easy again once you uh, get to know it uh, this is one of those games that will probably take m maybe just one maybe two sessions of playing it before uh, the the group is like oh yeah this makes this really makes sense but thankfully it's one of the games that is short enough that you could play two or even three sessions within the course of you know like an hour and a half or um, you know, two hours tops, and that's including learning how to play, which makes this a really, really fun, uh, wonderful game to uh, introduce pl uh, players to, especially to this type of game uh, with like the uh, building the settlements and things like that. And again, uh, similarly to Smash Up, seeing how different cards interact with one another and how you can sort of build up a, uh, a base of sorts of, uh, of like, say, uh, the militaristic. Uh, type of cards with uh, this particular game, but either way Wonderful game lots of fun to play lots of variety which always makes it uh, that much better race for the galaxy my number five I've got a game that is mostly on this list because it's essentially a much, much shorter and essentially watered down version of one of my favorite games. This particular one is Elder Sign. Uh, for those of you who don't know, this is a, a game that is similar to Arkham Horror, which is a very, very large scale cooperative game. This one, again, is a cooperative game and actually I think uh, pretty much the only cooperative one on this list unless you, uh, you count the resistance where you're, you're on teams, but that's neither here nor there. Uh, one of the reasons that I wanted to put this on the, uh, the faster, uh, the fast games list is that even though this does tend to take about an hour or an hour and a half, since it is a co-op, a lot of people are a lot more um, willing to sort of jump into the fray, so to speak, and, uh, and are willing to try this out. And uh, in addition, this is a, a great game solo as well, which, uh, which makes it that much more versatile in terms of who and how and where and when you can play it, which, is, which just makes games that much better. And especially uh, in a, at least a fairly well-designed game uh, as this, this particular one is. But the, the general consensus is the actually learning the game in this case can be tough, but again, since it is a co-op game, it makes it a lot easier to have like one or maybe two people who are experienced. You're gonna have at least one, I would hope, uh, who's experienced in the game and they can sort of say, okay, now you can do this or this or this, um, and I personally would recommend this. The problem is that can go down to a really dark place where it's essentially like this one person is just playing as all of the other characters because the other people were just like, oh, okay, I'll just do what you said. Um, and obviously the hope with something like that is as you're teaching the people, then uh, you're sort of able to back off and let them figure out for themselves what they're gonna be able to do. But again, uh, similarly to Race for the Galaxy as a sort of introduction to uh, different kinds of games, Elder Sign, definitely a good introduction to uh, co-op games and also in and of itself, a wonderful game, lots of fun to play and for the purposes of this list, very fast. So Elder Sign is my number four. Number 
three, I've got a really, really fun uh, card-based game that actually does a really good job uh, using a drafting mechanic. And not only that, but it's able to play a lot of people, which is always a really big help, especially for my purposes when I'm going to uh, the game store, just see people sort of aimlessly wandering around and say, hey, do you want to play? And uh, the game itself is Seven Wonders. Uh, I'm sure that most of you have heard and or have played this, and it's a really, really fun game. It's, it's a really well-designed, well-made game that has multiple avenues for not only winning, but just general strategy as a whole. And even so, even though it has these, uh, these sort of complex nuances to it, it still manages to clock in at about 30 or 45 minutes per game, which is really unheard of with something that has a lot of the mechanics that this one does. Uh, one of the really nice things too, like I said, is uh, it does play up to seven people, which is rather unusual, uh, but it plays as few as two. In my case, I really don't like playing this with just two people because you have to use a dummy. and. Um, and in this case, I really don't like the way that the dummy mechanic is set up, but for the purposes of this video, that doesn't really matter. Um, as far as just a relatively fast-paced game, there are not very many things that can beat this. The uh, the mechanics themselves, the, the actual mechanics of how you play the game are very, very simple. You're, you're just playing cards, and um, you know, you put cards down, and then at the end, you count how many points everybody has, and somebody wins. Very, very simple. The, the really fun part, like I said, comes in with all of the, the little nuanced strategy, uh, which, uh, like several other games that uh, I've talked about, not only in this video, but in the past, uh, really only starts to come out after a couple of plays. Uh, and then you're sort of like, oh, wow, like that's really something I can start to take advantage of and uh, really start working that particular system, whatever it happens to be. So overall, a lot of fun. Uh, it also has some great expansions as well. Unfortunately, I don't have any of the expansions myself I only have the base game but still a, a very fun gaming experience very um, not it's not a simple gaming experience but it's easy to jump in and play gaming experience which overall is why seven wonders is my number three Uh, one of the few games that I actually wish I could play a lot more of than I actually do uh, And it's funny because it is very perfect for this, this list The uh, game itself is King of Tokyo This game is so, so ridiculously fun And so ridiculously easy to learn and just jump in and play the instruction card is literally just a single page. Granted, it's double-sided, but still, it is so easy to tell somebody, here's how you play, here's your monster, let's go. And that's pretty much it. You literally roll some dice, see what you get, and you go from there. And, I mean, just dep it, depends, it does depend on what you roll, and it is definitely uh, very much press your luck. Uh, so, you know, you're in Tokyo and you can't heal, uh, but, you know, uh, as long as you're in there, you're gathering victory points and all that kind of stuff. Not only that, but this is a, a really cool game in the sense that if you really want to, you can actually shorten it. And it's, it's not something that's written into the rules, at least I don't think it is. But sometimes I've played it where we only play to 15 points instead of 20 or even 10. And that way you get an even shorter game. I mean, you can have a game that goes for 10 minutes. The problem with having those extra short games is that, uh, for me, it really kind of uh, makes it too uh, too random based. I mean, obviously you're already rolling dice, so um, it's, it's kind of bad enough, but uh, with the addition or the subtraction of total points needed, it just makes it that much worse. But then you know you've got like power cards and all sorts of stuff like that, which can sort of negate everything. And unfortunately, uh, the, um, 
Well, not really, unfortunately, but there is a, a new version coming out, which is the King of New York. And the unfortunate thing is that I was not able to get a copy of it at Gen Con, so I'm kind of sad about that. But I do still have my King of Tokyo, which is very exciting. And uh, they do have several expansions for this, which is really cool. Adds new, uh, new cards, new monsters, new all sorts of crazy stuff. But again, just same basic mechanics, very fast to learn, very fast to play. This is one of the ones where if you really get a good group going and maybe a little bit of luck on your side, you could probably play three games in uh, substantially under an hour. Maybe not substantially, but you know, like 45 minutes. I mean, you, you really could potentially do that. Uh, it's tough, but certainly possible. So overall, King of Tokyo, great game, fun, fast, easy to learn something that everybody can easily recognize, my number two. A game that can sort of be considered an extension of uh, something that I very briefly mentioned way way back at the beginning of this. The game itself is Lost Cities. So if you remember way way back I mentioned archaeology and Indiana Jones and in this case Lost Cities is essentially you get to play as Indiana Jones. The whole point is that you and up to three other people are uh, going and you're trying to uh, find the Lost Cities, as it says. Um, the, the idea is that it's really, really cool and the, well, obviously it's cool, but the way that the mechanics work is, I mean, it's, it's almost beautiful in a way because the whole point is that you're, you're just, all you're doing is you're taking little people and you're just moving them. And that's all it is. Uh, the movement is based off of cards and uh, you, it's essentially, you know, draw a card, discard a card, draw a card, discard a card. And you use cards to, uh, to move farther and farther up. But uh, in the same sense as King of Tokyo, it's almost a press your luck because the idea is in order to move farther, you need a bigger card. If you don't have a bigger card, you can't go farther up and all this kind of stuff. It's, it's really, really cool, very well designed, and uh, this particular version is actually, uh, I believe, the second version of the game. I don't know if it had any more before that, but the, the, the other version that I'm aware of came in a box that was about this big. It was, it was pretty tiny, but uh, this one actually has a, a full board. I don't know if the other one did. Um, either way, like I said, it's, it's fun, it's simple, it's quick. And like all of these games, it's also very fast to learn, which is a huge help with a lot of people. Uh, it, it, does, it can take a little bit longer to play, but I think that the, the theme of you know going through and, and finding the lost whatever it happens to be that you say you're looking for and or looking for the cities and anything like that is just something that people can relate to enough that it doesn't necessarily make them forget that they're playing a board game, but it makes them more willing to go farther with it. If you pull out a game like, a, like say, Cosmic Encounter, I mean, it is my favorite game of all time, but a lot of people really don't care that much about sci-fi. Uh, not to mention the fact that with Cosmic Encounter particularly, there's a lot of uh, relatively nuanced things that you have to keep track of. Uh, with something like this, you know, you're an archaeologist, you're trying to move that way, and you need small cards to do it. Excellent, I got it. Uh, and uh, not only that, but uh, something that I didn't really mention throughout this video is a lot of these games are the, ki the type of games where if you've got, say, even just one or two people who are experienced with it, then just let them go first. And then all the other players can just be like, oh, okay, well that's easy. And then you see exactly how you need to play. Now, something like uh, like I mentioned uh, Race for the Galaxy earlier, that's not really one where you can have somebody go first because, because of the phase selection and all that kind of stuff. But for something like this, definitely if you've got experienced players, let them go first so that everybody else can see how the game works. It's, it's easy enough and it, makes, uh, it really does make a great deal of difference, especially with new players. 
But with something like this, fast game, fun to play, easy to play, easy to learn, just wonderful overall, Lost Cities, my number one fast playing game. That's it for me, everybody. Thank you very much for watching my video on my top 10 board games that are relatively fast to play, very start to very finish. I hope that you enjoyed it, and if you have a favorite game that uh, fits into this category and or you agree, disagree, whatever it happens to be with my personal selections, feel free to put any and all of those thoughts down below in the comments, and I'll be more than happy to discuss and or just respond, whatever it happens to be, whatever is appropriate. And, uh, Again, I hope that you enjoyed this video, and I will see you next time. Thank you again for watching this video on my top 10 board games that are fast to play and fast to learn. If you have a personal favorite, if you think I'm completely wrong or completely right, whatever you want to say, go ahead and feel free to put it in the comments below. If you want to see more of my videos, you can see several of them linked up above. And if you want to see more in the future, go right on ahead and click that big giant subscribe button to see more about board gaming as well as video games and science. Thank you very much again, and I will see you next time.